we are familiar with role based access control right do you know how role based access control works in microsoft azure and what sort of assistance azure active directory provides to implement rbac in this video i will explain identity and access management features relevant to role based access control in microsoft azure i am dinush kumar siri and i warmly welcome you all to this video so what is azure active directory it is an identity and access management service provided by microsoft azure and your azure tenant is tied to one azure active directory instance in a nutshell aad is a place to keep your cloud identities and use them to authenticate later those credentials can be used to authorize to various cloud resources in addition to that azure provides numerous access management features like multi factor authentication privileged identity management and many more i will focus only on identities roles and scopes in this video let's see what types of identities we can have in azure they are called security principles as well first we can have users you can create fresh users in azure ad import using aad connect tool or invite guest users then we can have groups groups can contain other security principles we can have security groups as well as microsoft 365 groups remember microsoft 365 uses azure ad to manage its identities behind the scene the next type is service principles when you add an external enterprise application to your tenant or if you add your own custom application azure ad will bring an identity called service principle that will represent your application it will work as a normal security principle if your application requires access to azure resources you can utilize that service principle let's take a hypothetical scenario let's say that we have added jira application to our tenant for some reason let's say jira needs to access azure sql database we can easily achieve this by providing necessary permission to our jira service principle the final type is managed identities it is also a special type of service principle we can assign an identity to a particular azure resource and that identity is automatically managed by azure let's take an example let's say that you need to access azure key vault within a virtual machine rather than hard coding credentials to your vault in your vm you can create a managed identity that represents the vm and provide necessary permission at key vault instance we can have various types of credentials but what can we do with them obviously we need to secure our cloud workloads with those credentials right there is a concept called scope we can assign our security principles permission to various scopes let's dive in in order for our identities to access resources we need our subscription to trust an azure ad instance we can have multiple subscription that trust a single azure ad we can have visual studio enterprise subscription for the development and a pay as you go subscription for the production both of them can live in a single tenant trust in the same azure active directory subscriptions can have resource groups and those resource groups can have many azure resources we can then group our subscriptions into a something called management group we can have a tree like structure and the tree can contain parent management groups and child management groups so those are our scopes management groups subscriptions resource groups and resources we can assign our security principles permission at any scope the permission that you assign at the scope will be inherited to any child scope let's see this in action i have logged into my azure active directory instance and this is my home page first you will navigate to the users section in here i have two members and one guest user that guest user is a normal gmail account let's navigate to groups section i have three custom groups here let's create one group
IT administrator. And here there is a, a setting which is very important. It says Azure AD roles can be assigned to this group. If I made it as no, then I won't be able to apply any Azure AD role to this one. Since I want it, I will make it as yes. I will create it. It is created. Let's navigate to roles and administrators section. This contains built-in and custom roles. Let's go inside in a role. If I navigate to description section, I can see all the permissions it contains. So those are the allowed items, allowed permissions I can have on this resource. Let's create a custom role. We we'll create a sample role and those are the various permission items we have. I will just pick few items here and let's create it. Right, it is created. If I want to apply this role in any of our security principle, then I need to click on it and click on Add Assignments. Then we need to pick Members. And I can pick my group or other security principle. Here, if you can see my normal, my guest account is also there. So there's no difference between annually created users as well as invited guest users. I will add ID administrators and then I can assign it. So far, we have seen one part of role based access control. Previously, we have seen how Azure AD roles work. Now we will see how we can apply various roles and permissions on Azure resources. To illustrate that, I have opened one of my storage accounts. In my storage account, I have a section called Access Control. In Access Control section, there is uh, another subsection called Add Role Assignment. Let's see what it has. That contain various roles. Let's select uh, one role. Storage blob contributor. Let's see what are the permission items it has. Here. On the containers, it has those items. It can create, write, delete permissions. So what are the date action it has? So inside of a storage account, it can read blobs, write blobs, likewise. How can we add this to a user or a security principle? In here, I can select user, group or service principle, then I can select a desired security principle here. It can be a group or it can be a user as well. Following on the items I explained in this video, first we discussed about security principles. Then I covered the concept of scopes. Later, we have discussed how Azure AD roles work. Finally, I discussed how Azure roles work. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you have learned something from this.